These kids need to see somebody because they're attracted to the grill and the tattoos, but they need to see that, that this stuff means nothing without your heart being changed. Because God changed my heart. He, he saved me. He changed my heart, but he left my personality the same so that I can win somebody else. But don't see you get played like love in my face you get um, you know, I was a real um, troubled team, man. Just really got deep into the streets, man, real early in life. Between the ages of 9 and 11, I was, um, you know, sexually abused and physically abused. And I grew up very angry and violent. I felt like um, adult males or men never had a respect for me. I, I don't have respect for them because they never had a respect for me. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I, I always let pe kids know and people know that hurt people hurt people. Mm -hmm. And uh, when I go to the prisons, I go to juvenile shelters, um, a lot of the guys, and I ask them, you know, what happened? You know, I ask these guys in prison, what happened? Why did you kill these people? Why did you do that? And they always start with, well, when I was a kid, mm -hmm. this happened to me, you know. And, you know, hurt people hurt people. And my thing was, I was going to hurt you before you got a chance to hurt me. On the outside, you know, I was a thug and wilding out, you know what I'm saying? The street credibility and all that. But on the inside, I was still that abused, molested child, man, and still hurting. Um, and I had nobody to talk to because I had an image to uphold, you know. And um, so that was eating me alive, man. You know, I would cry myself to sleep, man. And I would always wonder, you know, why is this stuff happening? Why did this happen to me? Why? And, um, you know, th there became a time where that part of me just was eating me alive to. I just didn't want to live anymore because I had nobody to talk to. Mm -hmm. And then, um, so I tried to commit suicide. Mm -hmm. I was still in high school. Mm -hmm. And um, that day I didn't go to school. You know, I, I wasn't going to write a note, a letter, or anything. I just, you know, I just felt like, you know, hey, I'm just one, you know, the drug dealer gone. You know, nobody's going to care. Nobody's going to matter. You know, and, you know, there's people out there who feel like their life doesn't matter. And I went in the bathroom and I grabbed the the gun. It was a 30-30, big 30-30 rifle. Yeah. And I was getting ready to pull the trigger and push my thumb down on the trigger. And um, she forgot her purse in the room. And it was actually sitting right by my left foot. Mm -hmm. And she, we fought over the gun, you know, and we, and we fought over this gun and God, God, I believe it was God gave her the supernatural power, <laughs> you know. You know, I was just like, God, you know, if you're real, show me you're real. You know, it, everybody prays that prayer, but I really meant it. I'm like, my life has been such a disaster after disaster after disaster. If you're real, show me you're real. And there was a lady that lived two houses down from me, small, real petite man, but just on fire for Jesus. She was just out there with it. And I'm telling you, all the thugs, all the drug dealers were scared of this lady. She, <laughs> she'd be like, she used to, she used to do this thing with her hands. She's like, God got a calling on your life. Don't you know that Jesus loves you? What y'all doing? And we'd be like, yes, ma'am. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Uh, and then she came down to my house and she was knocking on the door, knocking on the door. And you know that knock, like that I know you there knock? Uh -huh. that, that one that just, uh -huh. yep. and I'm like, she just, ah, go away. <laughs> And then she finally left, and for the first time in my life, man, I heard the voice of the Lord. Mm -hmm. He said, son, don't you realize I use people? And, he, and, and since the Lord knew that I was in love with the Bible stories, he was like, don't you know I used Noah? I used Jonah. He's like, I use people. He was like, by you rejecting her, you rejected me. And even though I wasn't saved, man, it was hard to mm -hmm. deal with the fact that I rejected Jesus, mm -hmm. man. You know, I rejected the Lord personally because he uses people. And, um, you know, I, I pondered on that, you know, for a couple of days. And then that Sunday, I went to her door, you know, mm -hmm. and, and I said, I want to go to church. And, uh, man, I gave my life to the Lord, you know, and, and I said, God, you know, if you can do better with my life mm -hmm. than what I've done with it, because this is what I got, because this is what I wanted to do with it, then if you can do better with it, I'm going to give it to you. You can, mm -hmm. my life is yours. And um, I asked Christ until my life, man. I said the sinner's prayer, mm -hmm. and I've been walking with the Lord ever since, bro. Back then, gospel rap was still of the devil. <laughs>
<laughs> you know, God's rat was of the devil. So I didn't want no part of it. I just wanted Jesus, man. But I heard a group called Soldiers for Christ, mm -hmm. SFC. And man, that stuff was, it was from LA and that stuff was real mm -hmm. street. You know what I'm saying? It was relating to what I was going through. I started listening to that record. And I can honestly tell you, man, that, that, that I, I don't need rap music to come to Christ, mm -hmm. but to grow in Christ. Because the beautiful thing about music and the beautiful thing about gospel rap is that uh, it's perpetual. Music is perpetual. Mm -hmm. I can go to church it, for, for Thursday and Sunday, or I can read my word from time to time, but I'm always listening to music. Mm -hmm. I'm always listening to music. So guess what? You know, the Bible says that God's word will never return That's void. Right. So if God's word never returns void, and the kids are listening to it over and over and over again, um, it, it gets down in their mm -hmm. spirit. And so as I began to read this word, man, and it, it made me want to read the Bible to understand his rhymes more. Right. When Soup was rapping, I wanted to go to my Bible and read the word to understand that, that rap. And then when the pastor was preaching, I understood mm -hmm. because I had been listening to it all, all mm -hmm. that time. And I, and then I made up my mind. I said, that's what I want to do with my life. Mm -hmm. It changed me, bro. It totally changed me. You know, it's time for us to put excellent music out there so these kids will respect the crowd mm -hmm. so that they won't say this is the best Christian show that I've ever seen, but this is the best mm -hmm. show I've ever seen. This is the, my favorite CD, mm -hmm. not my favorite Christian CD, because now then they're willing to share it with their friends. Yeah. Like I was saying before, the gospel is supposed to be something that you share with everybody because you're first excited about it. I'm, I'm on fire for the Great Commission, bro, and at the end of the day, that's what it's about. These kids need to see somebody because they're attracted to the grill and the tattoos, but they need to see that, that this stuff means nothing without your heart being changed. Because God changed my heart. He, he saved me. He changed my heart, but he left my personality the same so that I can win somebody else. Ain't gonna change my swag game a big grill. He never liked me before, so big deal. Told folks, baby, losing your love back. You like him and the Mordecai, you caught that. I know you mad because your blessing ain't changed yet. Dog, don't get upset because some